Warning, it is the opinion of the Forestry Productions LLC and the Working Perspectives podcast that we should inform you that some of the language used in this recording could possibly be considered offensive. You have been warned, so if you decide to listen to the recording, then don't complain about the language. Finally, we get to the fucking pisser. And what do I see? A picture of Deion Sanders in every urinal, and it said, <laughs> and it said in big letters, Peon Dion. <laughs> Hi, hello, how are you? Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to talk to some real people about some real things, living real lives, doing real stuff. This is the Working Perspectives Podcast. I'm Matt Lavelle. I'm coming today by Schwap Game Steve Cabot, the Schmise Liam Reese, the Bad Boy Burn Pocasy, the Madman Sean Day, and Biff Sweater himself, Tim Casey. In case you're wondering, you can find all our stuff and all our content and all podcast platforms and YouTube at Working Perspectives Podcast. You can find us on Instagram at Working Specs Podcast, and you can join us on the Twitter and the Tiki Talk at Working P Pod. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, please email us at workspecs at gmail.com and please like and subscribe so we can keep this party going. Strong Stem, how we doing, baby? Listen, I was this fucking close to starting to build a boat because it hasn't stopped raining around here in fucking forever. And apparently, tomorrow, the rains shall cease. Yep, the sun so I'm ready because I don't know right if you know in my industry, I shit dripping on me, blah blah blah. I gotta complain, right? So I can, but it's gonna be over. So I'm at, I'm ready. Amen, amen. Very nice. So Shmi Shma, how are you, sir? I'm great, man. Been up for hours and hours, but it's that, uh, <laughs> it's that like complete disconnect where it's like a happy fog. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's how yeah. I feel. Good also, stuff. you know that you're going to crash as soon as this is over. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. Very nice. Sean Douglas Day, sir, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. Made it uh, to Houston. Ooh, from yeah. Tucson all the way to fucking Houston. Yeah. How far is that? Started, Damn. How long was the trip? We started Monday. It was uh, total... What's the mileage on it? Six, mileage? Shit. I should probably know that. I was going after hours. It was 16 hours. Jeez. Damn! So you over you over hours. a thousand? Yeah, you over a thousand. Oh, easy. yeah, probably like yeah, probably like seven, seventeen. Jesus. Like <laughs> yeah, but with, uh, I was prepared. I was prepared. I did it with the kids. I got a uh, ten foot long USB port for the iP- iPads. Hell I yeah! Signed up for the uh, the hotspot, so they have the endless supply of cartoons for. Oh, uh, dude. Good move. So it wasn't no. it wasn't like too too bad. Yeah. Nice. Amen. Very cool. Very good. Well, glad to hear you made it safe. Uh, TC Hater Biff Sweater, thanks for being back, sir. Been a little while. Happy to have you. How are you, pal? I'm doing great, brother. Thanks for having me again. Good, yeah, man. Happy to have you back as always. Very nice. And the man, the Benoit, the Pout Casse. It has been one year up and one year down that you've been on the show. You've Wait, been- seriously? Yeah, seriously. Oh my god, I had no idea. Oh, you yeah. dressed, yeah, 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 you just dressed. Uh, like this is how I. This is how I present myself, guys. I mean, I think yeah. you would know that by now. Respect. I mean, you Respect. do look great. You do look great, but that's that Burn, nice been going on. It's it's been one year <laughs> since you've been here, and I I remember you know it's just we'll talk about it, but it's been a year. How you feeling, babe? I'm feeling great, man. Happy to still be here. Uh, uh, trying to get in shape. I am a pound and a half lighter than I was one year ago at this time. So, uh, you there know, you I wasn't built in a day. I also yeah, skipped lunch, but I'm going to take that as a W. Stop that Hell w. yeah. Hell yeah. Stop that wood. Hell yeah. Nice. Well, Dude, I, gained, I gained 30 pounds. 30 pounds Hell since no. COVID started. God damn it. Well, I know. I'm getting fat, man. Similar, man. <laughs> I got like 20. Of, yeah. Speaking of gaining weight, this is the Work Perspectives Podcast. Yep. Let's get this thing started. Let's go. It's our objective to be effective by voice in societies. Working perspective, exploring your day and how you get paid. Launching a new episode every Tuesday. Your day can transform while we inform with new episodes. So check out our vibe and how we get live. Then do us a solid. Share and subscribe. Would you share it? Would you share it? Would you share it?
So on the show today, we got quite the show. We are going to start off with, we have the burn. It's like we said, burn pocketsy one year anniversary, but also because last week we did the draft, we didn't get a chance to recap the Daniel Costanzo episode. So on the show, we're going to talk about some crazy moments from sports games and then, you know, restaurant hookups gone wrong, maybe some harmless misdemeanors and a vacation. If you could choose a vacation, where would you go? So very nice. So let's get it started. So like we said, Burns one year anniversary. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later, but I want to talk about the Daniel Costanzo episode. Really, really good show. Really happy with how that turned out. A lot of fun. Uh, but on the show, Danielle shared a story about when we were at a Phil's game one time and we were behind the Phillies dugout and it was in between innings and Ryan Howard was coming back to the dugout and he was going to throw a ball into the stands for one of like the 10 kids behind the dugout with the glove and Danielle being like 20 something at the time, just mossed him and took yep. the ball Got him. <laughs> and she did it twice. And the crowd almost turned on us. And I was like, this could have gotten ugly real quick, but <laughs> you know, being, being that we've all been to some, you know, some sporting events, sometimes it gets a little crazy Songs time. I'm going to start with you. Uh, what is your craziest moment at a sports event? So these are these are going to be short and quick, but I have two. So I have two, both in the vet, right? So love it. Uh, my my first one. Uh, the second one was more traumatizing to me. The first one's just a quick one, but I I, I was during a '94 season, right? Eagles made the playoffs that year. Uh, beat Barry Sanders in the playoffs. Yep. I only got to go to uh the Dallas Eagles game that year. My family we poor. We in the 700 level. My dad can only take one kid, not both, right? So we get to pick a hey. game. So we used All to split right. it. Me and my brother would get one game each. Never got to go together, but could go with our pops, yeah. right? Yeah. So I go to the Cowboys game, and uh, my brother gets to playoffs against Barry that year, which pissed me off. He's my favorite player ever. Anyway, so uh, we get to the Dallas game. We come down from da- the 700 Dallas level. Dallas game vet- isn't bad to go to. So. Uh, it was, though, because you're talking of the, the big three and them fresh oh, off their fuck. third Super Bowl oh, in four fuck. years when they were just – we had no, sh- it was a fucking nightmare. I hated yeah. that fucking team. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we come down. Probably this is why too. I come Ray down. Rhodes era. And my dad. Ray Rhodes era. Uh, no way before I would have been before. Right. Right. Before, right? Uh, Rich yes. Co-tight? Probably Richie. Probably Rich Richie. Co-tight. So nah, they, those teams suck though. I forget. Anyway, <clears throat> it was, uh, at that point they had Michael Irvin. They had, uh, Emmett Smith. They had Troy Aikman, right. Blah, blah, blah. They had Moose. Blah, blah, blah. So they're coming off the field. And my dad and me came down to the lower level. He wanted to show me where they'd run in. I guess he wanted me to see this. And of course there's fucking a hundred assholes. This is again, 1994, way before there's ever such thing as a cell phone, uh, internet, anything like that. Right. So all these assholes are lined up to do some awful shit that no one's going to catch on camera. And no, just stories will be told, but there's no evidence. So they come out the thing. And of course, Michael Irvin pulls down his mask. They're all, you know, shitting on him and stuff and says, fuck you. And it was cold as shit. So he pulls his mask back up. And whether they had beers, hoagies, pieces of pizza, soft pretzels, a fucking glizzy, anything that was in every dad's <laughs> hand just got launched at all of them. Right. So now they're running in like Emmett and all them running in with their hands up. So fast forward, like a couple, two, three years. I, that was one of a top. I go to another Dallas Eagles game. I think it's 96 because Dion, who was also one of my favorite players ever. I was a cornerback when I played football. You know, I, Dion was, no one could run on Dion. There's no such thing as catching a pass on Dion. When he yeah. went everywhere you went, he didn't play left or right like these queers nowadays. He fucking said, well, who's the best player you are? Okay, I'm going over wherever he went, right? Yeah. And of course, he locked you down. So I love him, but he went to the Cowboys. So now I'm in a predicament, right? Loved him when he was in Atlanta. Atlanta, fine. It was kind of fine. corny at San Fran, but I San still Francisco, liked him okay. a little bit. Dallas, it was like, Dallas, oh, you gotta be, broke too my heart, far. right? Broke Can't my heart, it. but I still love him. He's my guy, right? I show up there. My dad's so, so disappointed in the fact that my favorite player is Deion Sanders. He's like, okay, well, my son's clearly gay and mm-hmm. he's going he's gonna to fuck dudes when he gets older. And I'm like, dad, that's not true. Right. And, and dad's an <laughs> asshole. So we go in there. He goes to take me to the bathroom. We're in the 700 level. It gets a little wild there. I'm seeing guys spit on people, all types yeah. of shit. Right. Just yeah. 700 at a vet. So we go in to go to the bathroom, long ass line. The vet had notorious, the shittiest bathrooms in the planet. So it took for fu- the lines were outside. The f- uh, finally, we get to the fucking pisser. And what do I see? A picture of Deion Sanders in every urinal. And it said, <laughs> and it said in big letters, Peon Dion. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I refused. And my dad, after that long ass line, everything we went for, I was like, there's no way I'm doing it. He was like, I will leave you dead in this bathroom if you do not piss on that stupid Peon Dion <laughs> fucking sign. Uh, so I, had to, I had to pee on Peon Dion and hey. you know, it fucking scarred me for life. 
Love it, dude. Little Peon Dion. Peon nice. Dion. Fuck that. Yo. I was mad as yeah, shit. Listen, nice. I'd be I'd be honored if people hated me so much they're putting my face on urinal cakes. I know. Did, now, like, did I did yeah, I did I right. it wasn't a urinal cake? This was like a poster on the back of every urinal. It was insane. They just like put this big laminated 12, by 12 inch. Yeah, uh, I forget. But I was definitely yeah, probably might not be. I would assume. Yeah, right. You Either way, know. I pissed, I pissed right on Dion's face, but whatever. Yeah. Do you remember the uh, one of the big things from that era? And it might have been that year, Steve, is when Michael Irvin got crushed. And, yeah. then and Dion was, was dancing or, uh, when they were but, booing. No, they cheered because he was I'm injured sorry. and had to get yes. carried off the cheered. field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they said it was because Dion was fucking dancing or fucking with him. It, it, it was kind of a fucked up situation. Yeah, whatever. They deserved it. Nice. Very good. Love that. Peon Dion. Very nice. Fuck bullshit. I'll tell you, man, when I when I had the season tickets, the Dallas games were they would get rowdy, but I'll tell you the New York games were it sometimes just as rowdy, if not rowdier. Cause it like because they travel better. You know what I mean? Like it's the close. New York, the New York, yeah, the New York people would show up. The Dallas 90 people, miles. The Dallas people would be like incognito. They'd wear like a black hoodie or something and have a shirt. They wouldn't on wear it. anything. Yeah, nothing yeah. says Dallas on their shit yeah they knew the deal so <laughs> not new york no new they well they came in groups so that's the thing yeah but man, squads yeah either way so speaking of Lashmi and then my friend Shma. calls your your girlfriend david deal but whatever <laughs> so Lashmi that bitch needed david deal <laughs> yeah that was a great story but uh what which is available scumbag. now on all podcast platforms and YouTube that expects podcast. it's not right but yep, Lashmi Shvam, kicking it to you. What a, you got a crazy moment from a sporting event? In 2003, Sixers were playing the Pistons. Pistons were up three-two on the series. Uh, Sixers played like a great game and everything. Uh, 2003 was the year I graduated, so I was only like 17 or 18, and you know wasn't doing hey, a good easy. job. I guess you got AI. Yeah, yeah, wasn't doing a great job like handling my trees and alcohol i guess and what i like stood up when when he scored when sixers scored and like the seats right in front of me i guess just like took my shins out and i fell like end over end <laughs> like know. down like two rows oh, and i was like i was like on my back and i opened up my eyes and like and people are like looking down like around you like looking down they're like oh my god like are you okay I was like, uh, yeah, I'm totally fine, you know? So, <laughs> but that that wasn't even the worst part. Sixers were up, like, what quarter most was of it? six. That was probably, like, you know, that was, like, in the middle of the game, maybe third quarter. Because they, they right. were up they were up most of the game. Like, first three quarters, Sixers were up. Around the fourth quarter, that's when Pistons and Sixers are going back up. Sixers were leading, then the Pistons tied it to send it into overtime. So this place is going nuts. The Pistons ended up eventually winning. And like the atmosphere just got like really nasty, really quick. Sixers are, Sixers, <laughs> Sixers are, Sixers are eliminated. Anybody with a Pistons jersey on it's and get like drinks thrown at it. And stuff. <laughs> Dude, at one point, I remember looking up and seeing from the higher levels, just seeing like cup cup you know what i mean like oh, beer yeah. like yeah seeing everything getting thrown down so we're like yeah. let's get the fuck out of here blah, blah blah we get outside it's pouring rain like we escape all that madness pouring fucking rain dude i get back to the car my car is completely locked and the keys are in the ignition it's pouring rain sixers just saw us escape the man i had to flag a cop down Cop uses the Slim Jim, breaks my fucking door. Yep, of and, course. Yeah, because you don't know what he's doing. On the driver's side, he breaks the door. That door can never open ever again. It's just like jammed, locked oh, no. shut. <laughs> so, at least you were at least you were stone cold sober when you had to go ask a cop for help, right? And and like, and seventeen. Yeah. <laughs> seventeen. 17. <laughs> yeah. So he opened the passenger side, and then from that moment forward, I had to get in on like the passenger side or, or yeah. roll the window down. I used to like climb in like NASCAR a car it. driver. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. What kind of car was this? That was a '87 Toyota Corolla. Hell yeah, yeah. Bernie. Do you remember when Murph used to have that LeBaron convertible? Fuck yeah, he's a Costanza. The Costanza he, he would, <laughs> so he, he would drive it to work, and, and he had a, like a parkade, and he would always leave the top down so he could just run out of work in his scrubs and just dive, in, <laughs> dive into nice. his convertible. <laughs> yeah, Murph oh, was a, dude, Murph the was red up. one, right? Yeah, yeah. it was the yeah. red and white. 
I remember yeah, that. Murph was a, Murph was a hospital tech on a uh, on a psych floor at a local Philadelphia suburban hospital. Yeah. Maybe the same hospital that Bob Saget would have been born in. Uh, Listeners of the show, the follow show. the follow the clues. <laughs> follow the nice. clues. So very good. Love that Lashmish man. That sucked, but <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> uh, yeah, nice. Let's keep it moving. TC Hater, Biff Sweater. What do you got for a crazy sporting event? Let me hear, it, baby. So this is a high school wrestling. St- story uh oh, i don't love it i'm not sure if i, <laughs> I don't know I that's def- gonna play man yeah yeah I, yeah so <laughs> i, I was that'll work here yeah. i was uh i was living with you burn at the time i'm not sure if i told you the story i don't know what, but uh so I, i'm coaching and uh G-town? we have an away meet so we meet at the school um you know take hop on hop on the bus with the kids go go to the our uh whoever we were wrestling that week and you were you were coaching one of the friends schools at the time yeah 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 so uh, yeah one another rich yeah person school great facility by the way so um we hop on the bus we go there lavelle you know the drill so you you get it you, you drop your shit in the locker room you go way in yep and then you, you got to get dressed and all your shit and then yep. you run out warm up and uh they announce all the wrestlers whatever and uh we're just getting to the point where like two minutes before the match they announced the wrestlers i was like all of a sudden i'm like i got a shit i got a shit <laughs> like and then, and then an emergency. So we have another coach there. It's no problem. So I walk to the nearest bathroom I could find, which is the locker room where we just got dressed. And I just run in there, boom, open the door, sh- baby shut it, <laughs> shut the stall. And it's just like, you ever see like the movie Dumb and Dumber? Like, yeah, that yeah. that was the shit I'm taking. I'm, you know, like, <laughs> Hold on for your life. it's just just like a faucet. So I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh, and all of a sudden I hear a door open all of a sudden, I hear and I, I could smell chlorine. And then I could hear like a crowd and I'm like, what the fuck is this? And then I just hear like all these, all these girls voices and stuff. And what happened was the door of the pool also opens in the same locker room. Cause if you remember, and when you're the away team, you change you in the women's the, locker room. Yeah. Yeah. Go to the girls. So I'm just, right, I can't shut, right. I can't shut it off at all. <laughs> and an entire girls, um, whatever water polo team <laughs> oh, comes <shit>. in. <laughs> so I'm just sitting there like, what the fuck do I do? <laughs> like, I can't stop. I'm like, I don't, do I pick my feet up? Like, so they're sitting there and I can hear the coach that they're giving like a pep talk. And I'm like, what am I gonna, like, what would you do? <laughs> I would just, dude, you have no choice. You gotta yeah, let it fly. At that point, I'm just letting it fly. Dude, Fuck dude. And it's just like, you're, you're just legit. Like, and the yeah. coach is like, I mean, we're going to go I... out there and we're going to. Yeah. 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 And they're coming. They're like in sinks. Like, cause the, there's toilets in one, there's showers on the other side and there's like yeah. sinks across from me. And then there's all the lockers. I'm like, do I run out? Like, I'm just like, I can't, I can't do anything. So I'm just, so I'm like sitting there and they're giving this speech. And I'm like, do I say, like, even if I said something, like I, I still have like, five I'm more shitting. minutes to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like, just like, yes, give me, I'll come and get you. When, oh. So I, I just like literally just sat there and I'm just like, I just froze. And finally she's just like, all right, let's have a good second half and let's all go. And they just all w- went back out. And I was like, thank <laughs> fucking God. Like, <laughs> but that's all it was. I didn't have to like run out with my pants down and go into like the men's room. Oh my yeah, God. waiting, waiting it out was the right choice. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Ooh. but I had no idea. I was like, are they going to start showering or something? Like, I have no idea what's going on. And like, I didn't even know there's a pool on the other side. I'm, my first time ever in the school. Reporting in progress. And just like an entire team comes in, so I was like, yeah. Golly. <laughs> Woo. Damn, that's tough. Yeesh. Because I also coach, so like I get. If that happening, I would just be like, you know, what am I? What are you gonna fucking do? I'm walking out like, what do you want? Are you gonna fucking laugh? Then fucking I, laugh. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, no, no one knows why you laugh too. How's that sound? Yeah. yeah. No, no one noticed me somehow. I don't know how to spell <laughs> it. I guess it wasn't that that bad one. <laughs> dude, I'll tell you, women are disgusting. I would have to close. Oh, the their gym. bathrooms are the worst, yo. Dude. Yeah, dude, I would have to close the gym, and part of closing the gym, you got to check the bathroom. Clean the bathrooms. Shit. Oh my god. Well, I didn't have to clean them. I just had to check. Is like. You know, sometimes someone would leave the water running. Or yeah, whatever. you just had to tell some. Poor I just, I just had to do that like the bathroom a, looked like shit. Well, I would just have to do a walkthrough and be like, "All right, nothing's on. I'm leaving, bro." And the shit, yeah. I, literally the shit I would find in there, I was like, "This came out of a fucking human." Like, hey! It's unreal. Yeah. Yeah, can you I, I can vouch for that. Who were Ellen's friends? Uh, Donnie and Donnie. Uh, 
Remember Gorman? Donnie, Donnie. She used to, she used to yeah. work for those dudes at the late night cleaning service. It was Donnie and someone. And I ended up like when I was at Vinny's, oh, I was also Eric? working at was Eric? No, they were two, two, two. They were they were a couple. I think they were Donnie and Donnie. Um I, I don't remember. Anyway, I'm working at Vinny T's and I'm I'm cleaning the uh NBC six uh station at night. So I'm just going right for Vinny T's and doing this till like 4 30 in the morning. <laughs> uh what I will say is. The women, the ladies' rooms were always ten times nastier than uh, the men's rooms, and I had an undefeated uh, streak of farting in Jim Gardner's chair every single night. <laughs> like I would run if I was if I if I was like down the hall, I'd run. Like, this guy makes four million bucks a year. That's How's that think. feel, pussy? <laughs> there you go. See you tomorrow. Nice. Uh, but the ladies' rooms were always way. Well, what do you? Yeah, that's been Ballad, my experience as well. Same. Yeah. yeah. What do you expect when the girl drinks her diet is uh, hummus, guacamole, and white claws? I'm sure whatever comes out of you after that is not going to be fantastic. <laughs> yeah. You ain't not crazy. ideal. Not nah. Great job. Nope. So speaking of white claws, Burn, uh, what is your craziest sports moment? Uh, so I was I, I was doing a little research. Uh, yeah. Once upon a time, about I guess it'd be thir- almost thirteen years ago, uh, I went to a tailgate for a Giants Eagles game, uh, Sunday night game. Uh, a lot of time ooh, for everyone was to this drink. Bri- was this Brian Dawkins uh, Hall of Fame induction night? I don't believe so. This was no. This was late November of two thousand nine. So the Giants oh. had just won a nope. Super Bowl the year like th- like that. Technically, they won in two thousand nine. Second time they're playing in the season, and so I go to the tailgate. Right, uh, it was my buddy Barnsey, a bunch of his friends from St. Joe's. Gallagher was there. Johnny Gallagher was there. There's a bunch of people. It is a Sunday night game. It's November twenty seventh. It's sixteen degrees out. So of course we go to tailgate at like one thirty. You know, what's the percentage of Giants, the birds in this group? Uh, Timmy's a Niners fan. I'm a Giants fan and all you guys are Eagles fans. So. OK, so two nons, but nothing. Yeah. New. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Two nons. I know you guys. Oh, now I'm now, now I'm learning the code. Now, now I'm getting, I guess oh, I might have just ciphering. made that up. But yeah, I mean, I like it. Wit. <laughs> Work. Yeah. So so have a great day. Right. Super cold out. But you get to say Johnny Gallagher had a TV set up in his trunk. We watched some ridiculous Adrian Peterson game where he had like 270 yeah. yards and three touchdowns tailgate all day i don't have a ticket right so i'm rolling out i'm just there i was just there for the fun i'm going to look for a train now uh some guys like hey listen my girlfriend uh she got super sick and we're going home so like just it's we got standing room and there's no way i'm dragging her to standing room. <laughs> like respect yeah and this is like 2009 <laughs> so we're probably like when they build the link probably like 2004 five yeah, 2002 yeah. was the first season first year yeah, so this is oh yeah. nine right so i go up there and i'm 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 dressed as a normal person i got a little winter hat on it's got a little giants guy on it i go not a little one it's is it blue and red too so it stands no, out or? there was no tassel it was just blue okay. and it just had a little it was, a, it was like a beanie i remember that yeah yeah just a beanie right? but it's it's giants blue so it sticks out a little yeah, yeah. i mean i know mm-hmm. I, I was it was not more trying like to be pussy. gray though it had the gray uh, on. you know what you're right it might have had a little texture to it but uh so I go up there in standing room, right? And it's a back and forth game the whole time. We're having a blast, right? It's I'm the Giants guy. They're breaking my balls. I can take some ball breaking. We're sharing joints. We're making jokes about fucking uh, Tom Brady. <laughs> everything's everything's, that was everything's the year, fun. That was, that was also the year he tore his ACL. Hell yeah. Yeah. And it was right after the Giants beat him. So they were like, yeah, we fucking Hell hate you. Yeah. Reach that fucking Brady. Take that Brady. <laughs> um, Uncle Plaxico Burris jokes. <laughs> oh, my God. So many Harrison Smith jokes. Oh, about yeah. Plaxico shoot himself in the fucking... But I'm a good sport, right? So everything's fine. We're all have We're all having... And it's it's a low-scoring back-and-forth, like... An you know, East dog crazy. Fight, you yeah, know. it's a 17-13 game or something like that. Have about four minutes left to go in fourth. Is Donovan still at that point? Mm-hmm. Uh, he throws a pick six, and we're just getting we're just getting close to the two minute. And now it's 24 13, and like the the worm has turned, you know. Like all of a sudden, I'm like, hey, I'm good. Oh, my buddies over here. Where are my buddies? Where are my friends? Where are all these friends I made over the last two and a half hours? They're not there anymore. I mean, they're there, but I don't recognize them anymore. You know, they look different. Mm-hmm. And so I go to take a piss and I'm walking back and the security guard grabs me and he's like, you're fucking out of here. And I was like, <laughs> what, what are you serious? Like, I, wh- what did I do? Like, I, I, I did nothing. I just, and he just grabs me. And he's like, 
just take the fucking three minutes and get the fuck out of here. Okay. And I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, you're right. Thank you. You're right. Yeah, thank you're right. you. Actually, that's a, and I didn't have to bitch out. You know what yeah. I mean? Like he threw me out publicly in front of everyone. And so I gave a little like, you know, baseball brawl. Just like, how dare you? I didn't do shit. But it was enough. It was enough time and space. And I was like, this guy, I'm probably, the, I'm probably the 150th person he's done this to. Like every yeah, game he man. works, he finds one person in standard and be like, hey man, just get the fuck out of here. Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll throw you out. It won't, yeah. You want to look a bitch about it, but uh, trust me, you're going to want to go. And yeah. uh, like, I, know and I was mad at the time. I was mad at the time. And before I even got to the bottom of the ramps, I was like, that guy rules. Yeah. That guy's mm-hmm. the best. Yeah. I'm going to go back to the car and hope somebody has keys for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> nice. very, where you are. very nice uh for me crazy sports moment now uh, there's been a bunch i don't know one thing that comes to mind the snowball was nuts i was at the snowball when we yeah. played when we played detroit in the chip kelly era and so, shady shady went, had foot bananas four. people well this is the thing people fucking forget the first half of that game was fucking miserable and then the start of the second half of the game, Detroit ran back a punt for a touchdown. Shady really didn't start going off until midway through the third. And then we had a fucking killer fourth. D-Jack score. Like, you know, Bryce started, Brown, right? For, yep, yep. And then we didn't start. Riley <laughs> Riley Cooper <laughs> was still on the team. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. Fan of the show, listener of the show. Fan of the show, listener of the show. Uh, but, yeah, no. And they, total piece of shit, but whatever. But, that I just remember being because I had sat with Dave Hamilton, who was my old boss, Burn knows him. Oh, he shit. had yeah, he had season tickets, and I'd gone with him that game and gave my seat up to a friend of mine. So, like, you know, he's my buddy sat with Tom. I think it was Screwball sat with Tom in my seats, and I sat with my boss, and we were seven rows from the field. And I just remember like looking up at the Jumbotron and you couldn't see a thing. Thing. it yes, was that like, was so bad it was so no sick. idea what the score is yeah yeah but it was awesome though it was cool it was a really great experience but let's keep it on moving on keep it on moving down the road so next up we're gonna talk about maybe maybe, maybe not when d siren was on the show she talked about meeting her husband while working at a restaurant right and that got me thinking has anyone else had some restaurant hookups go awry? Uh, Lashmi Shma, I'll start with you, my man. So when I worked at Tex-Mex, the guy that was the sous chef at the time was like, dude, he was good at his job. He was like popular with everybody and everything. Like he was, he was in good with the owner and whatnot. But then he started dating this, uh, one of the, one of the servers and she was like probably like the cutest chick there but one night uh the other servers noticed like their purses were missing and like that people were missing all this money and everything so the host walks in and sees like you know you can see somebody sitting in one of the stalls and then you can see like the you know, like a circle of purses, <laughs> like around them and stuff. So this girl's raiding everybody's purses, stealing all their shit and everything. She gets caught as as they're bringing her back through to like boot her out because the bathroom's like upstairs. The doors are downstairs and everything. So as they're bringing her back out, she's yelling to the dude who's working back in the uh, working back in the kitchen, like "We're out of here. We're getting the fuck out of here." Blah blah blah. Like she came up with some story. Like obviously she's stealing everybody's shit you know yeah yeah which turns out she was like uh you know doing like perks and shit and yeah was like a junk but you would never be able to tell but this poor guy dude like he he had it like he was in a good position there and everything probably made more than everybody like good at his job and everything dude he just he, he had this like look of defeat like almost like he knew one day like this was gonna happen he takes his apron off he's like well i guess i can't stay here now <laughs> <laughs> you know, he just takes off because he yeah. knew like how are you gonna work with all those people after you know after yeah, your girl's he's, been he's ripping still, everybody off yeah. you know he's still gonna date her you know what i mean yeah man yeah. that's they li- they live together still they're still together yeah. no, no no i mean at that oh, time they yeah. lived together. Yeah. i don't know what i don't know what happened to him now i would but. love it if they're like the you know he's like a fortune 500 guy they have a house in the hamptons that'd be great 
No, I just remember his face, like when he found out what happened, like when somebody came back he and told him. Knew. He fucking knew. Yeah, he fucking knew. Like, he's like, oh man. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like he knew she was doing that shit, but yeah. then she was caught, so he's like, fuck, this is yeah. over. <laughs> you yeah. know. Yeah. Oh, nice. Fuck yeah. Very cool. Thank you for that. Uh, the Biff sweater, TC. What do you got? Any type of restaurants go awry or? So- any bar game anything whatever happened go ahead well, most of my restaurant experience was uh basically like delivering pizza jobs so i did have one good job i worked for uh an establishment called all-star and i don't know if that's right oh, yeah. Or yeah, down hell there. yeah all-star pizza hell yeah mm-hmm. and, open all and night the best, yeah the best thing about that place was yeah it was open it was I, my shift was 4 a.m or 4 p.m to 4 a.m uh like friday or thursday they must friday have cleaned up Saturday. after the bars went came oh. out you were just it was ridiculous. Bumping. I I mean I would leave with ten orders. Half the people would be passed out, but <laughs> yeah. So, but what an answer but, the phone or the door. Yeah, yeah. You're just, yeah, you're bringing back pizzas <laughs> constantly. But you know, every 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 other place I went to was just an after party. Like people just got to the bar, so like come in, have a beer with the like whatever. So yeah. definitely had a few hookups from uh, from that. And, um, right. and I guess you met uh, Sarah, who was a. Uh, a co-worker who yeah I, you know we talked about her she, yeah she was, i guess we don't have to talk too much <laughs> she was a uh, she was fun a lot yeah. of fun so very nice she, Love. she ruined my life for about six months <laughs> very good very good so burn what do you got um restaurant almost, like, hookups yeah restaurant hookups gone wrong yeah. uh 99 percent of them. yeah <laughs> there is there's like, never pretty much where you eat nope uh 29 year old manager uh 19 year old hostess that's gonna it's fine for now but in, in eight weeks everyone's everything's fucked up one of them's not there anymore you know assistant general manager who's 33 and uh 25 year old married server that's also going bad they almost all go bad because of the the gas of that industry which is just like go there work your ass off and then go blow off steam and everyone agrees that's the deal and but really like there's a lot of other jobs that are just as hard if not harder that it's not like we have to go out every time we finish this and have <laughs> 11 beers like yeah. Uh, yeah. uh but if if you're 19 you start doing it then everybody else is doing it you're like well i guess this is what i'm supposed to do yeah and then your liver is like you fucking dummy my answer is almost all of them i met my wife at a restaurant so i feel like a little bit um conflicted you know because i know it can go good but it almost never does i mean it very 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 rarely uh goes well and yeah how many do you see go well just from the perspective very few three and a half (laughs) <laughs> you know out of like probably like a buck you know 22 jesus christ um, you included yeah, in that not, three yeah i'm one i'm i'm a full one I'm a full jesus. well i don't know i have talked to my wife i might be the half at this point but dude i only know uh, one of it yeah i yeah. only know one of, oh, like, it's rare. Of, of all the yeah of all the places i worked i only know one damn because eventually someone's going to want to get out of that job and do something else and the other person if they don't want to get out of that job then you create a situation where like okay well yes. you work uh, nine to five and i work five to midnight and yeah. uh yeah this will this will be great we'll be, this is gonna be so easy in three months when <laughs> yeah we, we can only go out to dinner on mondays oh. <laughs> because my restaurant's closed but guess what so are all the other fucking restaurants so like, yeah. <laughs> you're like oh you need a haircut well, i'm off sunday monday well i guess i'm gonna grow my hair out this year I can't find a barbershop on a Sunday, Monday. Um, the the relationship with restaurants is the uh, is the problem. Plus, too, like, yeah, like you're saying, where if you have a fight at home and then you got to see them the next day in the restaurant and you need to work together. Like if it's in an office, you can kind of keep your space and not talk to them because you don't really need them. But it's such like a team atmosphere or like kind of like you need each other in that scenario where it's just like, fuck, now I have to talk to this cunt, you know. It's even, not even being the dude if like you're bartending and then the other bartender and a server are dating and they're fighting and every time they come up for their drinks uh, you're just like guys i just shut the fuck up it's yeah it's bringing yeah. people food and beverages it's not rocket science man just yeah. take the people what they want <laughs> shut yeah. your fucking mouth but yeah uh for some reason it's a very highly charged emotional environment the worst when you see like a smoking hot chick be with a complete fucking strewns out too. Ah, uh, nothing worse. Breaks your heart. I'm starting yeah. to feel better about that as time goes on. 
It used to yeah. bother me way more when I was young. Agreed. And, Agreed. And uh, agile. Now I'm just like, yeah. Yeah, you know. Kisses I see me. Oh, yeah. Fuck you, buddy. Yeah. So very nice. Thank you for that burn. All right, strong Sam. What do you got for restaurant hookups going to ride? So my, my perspective is a little different, right? I've only worked in one job my whole life, really. Other than that, never, especially never in the, in that industry. So my point of view was always hooking up with the waitresses or the bartenders or whatever in that industry. Right. So I shouldn't fight. I, this makes me, um, this is traumatizing for me. This story, very, the PTSD out the asshole from this. The only reason I'm fucking telling it is because fan of the show, listen to the show. Ian, who's been on there, loves this <laughs> fucking story. Fuck you, Dub. He fucking my teases first, about me to this day. My first episode. My first episode was uh, the, your recap of Ian's wedding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's all full circle, man. We got to cut that. <laughs> anyway, so... <laughs> So he uh, uh he lo- he's gonna love this. Fuck you, Dub. He's I love him. He uh, fuck him. I, me and him at this point, and uh Emo and uh Matt O'Connor and another guy, uh Bob, we call him I'm gonna call him Bobby Bagels for the minute, right? Because I want to put him out there like that. If you know, you know. So uh we uh we have an apartment out in Warminster, Warrington, some shit like that. I don't fucking know what it is. It's up there on by like Street Road, right? Yeah. So uh, we're in this. It's a nice one. Matt had it from somebody he worked with. Dude had like a fucking five thousand dollar or five hundred thousand dollar town town home. Damn. Three bed or four bedroom pimped out. Real nice basement. I took the basement, built a partition, blah, blah, blah. Sick Damn. ass setup. Right. So we're all like 22, 23 at this point, 20, eh, 24, maybe. So uh, we so uh, just live to party. Ah, uh, in a pimp crib too. So it looked like we had money. Really, we didn't have shit. Yeah. But I mean, we were doing well enough, but nothing crazy. So we, uh, there's a bar up the street, right at uh, Street Road and whatever the fuck road we were on, right. So we go up there, me and Bobby Bagels and Matt and everybody freaking this place a couple times. As we're in there, there's this bartender that is so fucking beautiful. I can't explain it. That's a hundred percent up my alley. I can already tell by the fucking tan skin, jet black eyes, jet yeah. black hair. This is Hi. this is up my. Come on, baby. Uh, way, way better. So she comes over. She's usually I'm into Spanish broads, but this counts. And this bitch is 100 percent Native American. And I ain't oh, talking I, that. Ooh, I, ain't, I, I, I ain't talking. I ain't talking <laughs> fucking that stupid Elizabeth Warren bitch shit. I mean, this broad oh, is a blood. You're fucking I got a percent. fucking tomahawk. I'm ready to cut a dude's fucking hairline. You're back. about to get on the Blackfoot tribe with Tiger You have Lily, no babe. idea. And if I live during your people's time, they'll respect me. I wrestled. They like that shit. I, I'm in love with this broad, right? How's your highlight so, game? Oh, I'm so I'm so in love with this broad, right? So immediately, and she, Bobby Beggles is a big, good-looking guy. He's from uh, Long Island, has the thick accent, all Bobby tattooed, uh, right? And he's Obviously, big. Obviously, his name is so, Bobby Beggles. I wouldn't right, have said right. that. I thought Adonis. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. <laughs> so Bobby... Uh, he's talking to her too. And I'm like, you know, sometimes girls like him until they find out, you know, he's Bobby Bagels, but Bobby spent his game. I'm spent mine. I'm like, eh, blah, blah, blah. this bitch instantly makes a beeline for me. Right. Again, Spanish bitches, I think like crazy guys. So maybe I don't know what the fucking thing is, even though I don't know what a native American is. I guess that's, you can put that under the Latino, whatever. But anyway, so this we'll girl starts making Gonzo. a move towards me. I, I love it. I love it all. All of it's fantastic. <laughs> I don't, I don't native American was perfect. Like, I don't give a fuck what it's it called. It is. It's everything I love is what I call it. So uh, this broad starts to like it. She's super cool. You can tell the way she's handling herself, like, you know, talking to other people. Guys are oogling over and she's just spotting these bulls off. But apparently she has a thing for old strong stem. Right. So, again, when I you know, I'm kind of famous for way out kicking my coverage my whole life. So oh. I'm like, this is this is happening uh-huh. again. I'm like, why would this broad look at me? Right. So uh, uh, she comes over, starts talking, wants to get a, wants to hang out. This, that, yard thing. So now I start frequenting this establishment a lot. Right. So she's in there all the time, but she's, she's not playing with the dumb shit. Cause usually she's dead sober. She's bartending and I'm getting fucked up. So it starts out fantastic and ends a little fucking, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I didn't remember who knows, but probably not great. So it takes me a little while to work this broad down. Finally, she's like, you know what? Hey, why don't we hang out one time? Give me the, your number. Blah, blah, blah. I thought we were just friends, but we'll see. Now she's giving me your number, right? So I hit her up. Um, I'm losing my mind. I'm back at the crib, like, yo. And they and my boys know me, right? So I'm trying, I'm telling emo, I'm telling, I'm like, I got, I'm, I'm marrying this girl. I'm I, I don't know what I gotta do. I gotta figure it out. If I gotta kill someone, I don't know if I have to chain her to the fucking radiator in the basement. But if I get her here, she's never leaving. I'm telling you this, right? I, I love this girl. So they 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 all seen her too. They were like, Yeah, I don't. I have no idea why she's looking at you. But anyway, so she comes back to the crib. 
we talked the one night, take her out to a real nice fancy dinner. You know what I mean? Like a fucking gentleman. So I take her to a nice dinner, do the whole wow. And, and you know, I'm, I'm a, I wrestled, so I'm a fat kid at heart. So I, I, when I do, one thing I do do is eat well. So I took it to a super sick spot. Greatest time of my life. This girl's feeling me. She's awesome. She's athletic. She played soccer. This bitch can do backflips. I am in love, right? Get her back to the crib. I got that dope ass house I was talking about. Sick setup in the basement. I mean, this bitch gonna think I'm rich or some shit. It's fantastic. It's working all. I got a bike at this point in my life. Right? I got a crotch rocket. Shouldn't tell her I'm gonna take her out on this. Blah blah blah. We get back in the crib. We go down the stairs. We start messing around. I'm like, this is again. I, I don't know what to do. I'm like trying to think in my head how I don't bust in one pump. I how do all night bust when she pulls my dick out, right? Because I'm not trying to do that. And then like a fucking you know dickhead. This yeah. brajul. I, I don't know what I'm gonna do, right? I'm trying to figure it out. So uh, I'm. Um, whatever. We get it down. Start fucking messing around. She's grabbing on me. Blah, blah, blah. Get her naked. I get naked. I'm not paying attention. though. I had a couple of beers. I'm not paying attention. Everyone's having a good time. I happen to take a small glance down to the largest, most aggressive vagina I've ever seen in my life. It looked like one of them fish from the bottom of a thousand seas where it like the thing comes outside of the thing and opens with teeth and can eat you. I don't know. A fucking it looks like kraken. Kraken. it's a kraken. It looks like a quickly packed <laughs> suitcase. I've never seen anything like this in my life. And nothing in my life has ever prepared me for this because I've never seen this, right? I, I, I didn't know what to fucking do. She's I, I, I was pa- Majora. I almost passed out. Dog, I didn't know if I was supposed to put my foot to my knee in there. I didn't know if I was supposed to. I, I didn't know what was happening, right? So I was like, I fucked it. But so, like, you know, after but seeing that, I've not, it was when they say moose knuckle, this drawing had, it looked like two rolled up pizza those slapped next to each other. And the someone Kel made. Zone. Oh yeah, my! Were, were were you like? Were you like? Man, my girl's got a big pussy. Man, oh my, my girl's got a big pussy. This isn't a big pussy. This was a creature that would eat you whole. Not I've never. It was a portal. It was a portal. Matt, you're wrong. That's not the. That's not the predator. The predator joke is when Billy says, "Before I was leaving, I said to my girlfriend, hey, 'Hey, I'd like a little pussy,' and she said, "Me too. Mine's as big as a house.'" That's the better <laughs> joke. I thought it was the echo. No, joke. the echoes from something else. The echoes from something now, else. The sad part at the end of this was remember how I built this up? Dog, yeah. This fucked my head up more than you. My friends were like, dog, you was in a funk for fucking three months. I didn't know what to do. I was walking around <laughs> like a zombie. I was trying to convince myself that it was okay. I could figure it out. But what I didn't happened? know. I, I mean, dog, I don't know if it had a small penis. That joke could have been a tranny. I don't know what the fuck was happening, but it was something I've never seen on a porno, on a magazine, in real life. Or I've never heard anyone speak Did she to have this. a bush? I mean, dog, it the, you wouldn't know because the pizza dough things <laughs> flopped over every. I've never seen anything like it because you wouldn't know. I didn't know if there was a giant wound from like a fucking 50 caliber that hit her in the hip. I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know if I needed a tourniquet on her fucking waist because I was blown away and still wow. to this day traumatized to this wow. day. Talk about some and, TP flaps, huh? One of the and, one and, and on, the most, unique. on the most gorgeous in shapes. Uh, this girl, her ass, her, her whole package was insane. Insane. Well, now we know why she went on a date with you. Dog. <sighs> I, she knew she was like, me. well, I yeah, can't well, get to, Leo with this. To movie. be to be fair, just for the record, Steve still hit it, you know? Oh, yeah, like, I definitely he, fucked he it. I figured deterred. it out. No, no, no. I, I how how many times, though? How many times is One. question? <laughs> One. I figured it out. I figured it out after I stuck my dick in it. I was like, well, maybe it's fantastic. We'll try. And then the I was just the whole time. Just I was like, this is just for practice. You're like, why is Swamp Thing grabbing on my nuts? All of a sudden, I felt my hip starting to come in like a goddamn fucking toilet was sucking me down. I was like, ew. Oh, all right. That's enough. Yeah, damn. Yeah, and it's not fucking funny, guys. It's it's still this day. It scares me to death. Yeah. Because if I ever see this thing again, it was like seeing fucking a grizzly bear in the wild. Cuz, like, I feared for my life. I don't think you understand. No. (laughs) Shit was scary. All right. Let's shout out that girl. She was beautiful. Beautiful. Fan of the show, listener of the show. <laughs> oh my <Yeah>. god. <laughs> so let's keep it moving, keep it on moving down the road. So what I'm gonna talk about now, D Siren <laughs> talked about on her show. Uh giant bes- pussy dragons. Well, besides the flesh fact wounds that below the waist by a 50 cal. She uh did talk about how fluffers are non they don't exist. That's a made up thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but she did also talk about how. Now that she's like, you know, her children are getting older, she wants to go on vacation and 
made me think what would be if you could go on vacation one place where would you want to go and i'm gonna start with you tc biff sweater one place you go on old vacay where are you headed got to for me it's got to be greece 100 percent mykonos great one great one man mykonos love it very nice yeah i mean like greece tc the food, the weather, the history. Cause see, like I, I love history. Like Rome, I love Rome. What weather's yeah. great, but like you got everything. But they rob Greek. <laughs> in, in Greece, you got everything. Like I'm, I'm not big. Like I'm pretty hyper, as you know, Burn. Like I can't just sit there and enjoy. Like if I was on like a resort, I would be bored to death. Like I would be yeah. sitting. Yeah, well, you would. Like, hate, I gotta do you shit. Nothing more. But Greece, you have everything. It's like beautiful. You wake up, you look out, everything. You know, you're on the water. It's beautiful. But then yeah. all the history, all the shit that you could see. You jump into a weird sea, you climb a weird mountain, yeah. like there's all kinds of shit to do. Bang hot chicks. You just, you know, I'm hiking oh, yeah. the volcano today. Uh, yeah. Today I'm trying feta, you know, like there's adventures yeah. everywhere. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Greece no. is pretty cool. Yeah, Plus there's Greece. so many islands, like Greece also covers so your ass for all so of many the islands. islands. So many. So yeah, many. I don't know if That's I can do a cruise one. either, which seems to kind of be the move though for Greece. I don't know. Well, because there's there's so many islands and you're just like, you're cruising. You're like, hey, we're, we're going to yeah. three of these know, today. Cru- yeah, cruise ships kind of gross me out really, but I've, I, I've maybe never, I could do it. I've never been on one I never wanted to, but if you could charter a boat on mainland Greece and just be like, yeah, we're gonna take a week and just go check out these islands. Maybe we'll see five of them. Maybe we'll see 20 of them. But yeah, I de- definitely have to talk to somebody that's done it to plan it out. They probably have like tours, like, wait, you know what I mean? Where there's islands that are closer that you can do within like a day's time or something where you don't have to be like stuck on a fucking boat for days. Yes. You know, somebody before us who's actually Greek and lives in Greece has figured this out probably. Uh, yeah, I gotta do my research <laughs> before I waste my time there. I think whatever you do would be a good time. I think wasting your time there is impossible, but yeah. it could be used in better fashion. Are you? Yeah, exactly. Like, you can't fuck it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. No way. TC, you like no. history or no? I'm not huge. I'm not like big into like you know American history and and like wars and shit. But like just walking around like Rome and just seeing the shit that was built that long ago, like it it overwhelms you. It's like really, it's amazing. Yeah, no, no, dude. Yeah, I, uh, I'm a big, I, I'm, I agree with you. Couldn't agree more. Very nice. Uh, also, also, oh. Timmy, what's your, what's your job right? Now? What's my job? Yeah, you build things. Yeah, well, I'm mostly a landlord now, but I, yeah, I've been doing some. Building I mean, like for a long time, you, you build things. Like that's a, you, you have that kind of brain where you're like, oh, how the fuck did they? Yeah, you can see it's cool. Like, cause a lot of it's like deteriorated too, so you could see like the facades coming off, and like you can see how shit was built and like. The craftsmanship back then is like nothing that we can make. Even the buildings that they're still using in like Rome, it's like couldn't build this for fucking twenty million dollars, like for basic shit that they have there. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Nice, very cool. All right, Lashmishma, what about you? You get vacation anywhere? Where are you going, baby? Cairo, in Egypt. Egypt. Yeah, Yo, to see like the, the pyramid. The, yeah, to see the Giza pyramids and stuff, dude. So that was like. 3,000 or, th- or no, like 2,600 so a bunch BC. Of, bunch you know? of dipshits say that. Wait, wait, 2,600 BC? Yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's what, but so that's right. Right. 5, so it's, it's, years older. ago? Yeah, they're Steve's older. right. They they estimate that it's yeah. 2,600 BC. It could easily be before that. Older. Because right. like Steve said, how the fuck would you know? Exactly. But anyway, they're at least that old. Yes. And all those pyramids, dude, they, they estimated. So it's 2.3 million blocks were cut to build that shit, dude. To that build all long three ago. of them? To build all of them. But it's insane to even think about it. It's 5.7 million tons of block were used to build all that shit. With what, dude? They're out yeah. in the middle of the desert with fucking Yeah, how do you nothing. make clay with no water? Yeah, no mm-hmm. electricity, no. Fu- how the fuck did they do that? It's awesome, dude. Yeah, you know. And they're all they're all correct on uh north, south, east, west, right? Yep. Like, yeah, hundred percent precise. Corners. Yeah, yep. yeah, they're ridiculous, dude. It's awesome. It's like one of the yeah. craziest things you could go visit. You know, it's why conspiracy yeah. conspirator people are conspiracy. How come I can't say this yet? Am I having a stroke? You all got to come get me? Conspiracy. Conspiracy. <laughs> wiggle, wiggle Conspiracy? your fingers on Right? Uh, Jesus Christ. All right. You're okay. Conspiracy theorists and things like that say that um, obviously they were built way before then. And there was like all this high level technology that got wiped out by like a meteor and, you know, killed a bunch of people. And that's the that technology didn't move forward. But because there's like there's no other fucking explanation. Or how they can nail this like this. Or know? aliens. Yo. Right. Or, or aliens. Right. Yeah. How can yeah, there, they are, there are some people like that this? would argue that they did have electricity and then it's just 
Right, that's, right. That's they, been exactly. Away, yeah. They had these really high technology that people didn't realize and got all fucked up. But that's yeah. cool to think about too. You know what I mean? It's that's wild. Why, yep. That's why wild. the whole thing, you like, you know what I mean? Like the possibilities are like endless. Dude. Wild. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you think about something like that, right? And you're like, okay, well, may, if they couldn't generate electricity, I bet they found a way to harness it, you know, for sure. At the very Energy. least. Agreed. Uh huh. Nice. Yeah, dude. Great shout, Lishmisha. I'm with you. Mm-hmm. I would love to figure out. I would just love to find the fuck out. Be like, what's? The I just want to see it. I just want to stand yeah. there and and take it in and like, yeah. you know what I mean? See the size of it and like the. They're supposed yeah. to, dude. Like they're massive, right? Isn't yeah. like one stone like eight feet tall or something? Oh, it's insane. That's crazy. Yeah, they're ridiculous. Nice. All right. Uh, Benoit. <laughs> say where are you going baby so this is a um one of my best friends uh dino his wife mariah uh, her father was british and her mom was from malaysia he did a walking tour of japan so when he was like in his late 20s he started at the top of japan and walked from the top to the bottom and wrote his old travel memoir and then he went back 30 years later and started at the bottom and walked to the top and wrote another travel memoir about it and i've read it and it sounds like the coolest fucking thing in the world because you're just walking from village to village and but then all of a sudden you hit these huge cities but as soon as you leave them it's not like phoenix you know what i mean where it's like oh what am i still in phoenix i feel like i'm in like 12 suburbs like the cities over there are massive metropolises and then when you leave they're pretty close to you know the villages have gotten bigger but they're 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 their own kind of thing um that's fucking cool and he was like it's like a a 29 year old guy when he started at the top and was like i'm just gonna spend five months walking from the top of the island to the bottom of the island because japan's not that big for as many people as they have and all the cultural influence that they have on the whole world they're there's not that they're not that big man so how many people in like these villages speak english like is it because it's tough to get around well he was uh uh, yeah, like out of outside of the cities, it was. Or did he have like a around. guide? Uh, for some, at some points he did. At some points he didn't. Like at some point he'd catch, he'd find someone in a village who could speak, and he'd be like, "How far we want to go?" And he'd be like, "I'll go with you for three days." I'm like, "All right, yeah. well, here's what I'll pay you for three days, and then I'll pay for three days back." But um, probably 50 50 Like when he had someone yeah. there, when he. But his second trip back, when like thirty years later, he had then spent a lot of time studying language and. Now he understood how to read it and so uh, yeah, upon his second google trip translate back, your... <laughs> yeah and also he's, it's a lot you know, easier now i guess and he was pretty he was pretty well studied on the subject so he was able to go back and you know one or two times i think he had a guide but for the most part he can get himself through there like really well it was just a really cool story man and just a yeah. dude who was like i'm gonna go to a place walk from the north to the south and then 30 years later i'll do it the other way nice love it so i go to japan very cool steve where are you going now for me this is a i love this question because again i'm a huge history and geography guy to him the only yeah. subjects i ever really paid attention to so this one means a lot to me right i had to take, put some thought into this because i could have went usual steuben's asshole and been like i want to go to fucking copacabana so i can see how broads which yeah, shout out there, whatever. Runner up, but, <laughs> said, yeah, runner, yeah. Up. runner up for sure. But Finish so this one, show. this one for me, uh, this one's the top of my bucket list for any place I've like. If I ever have the chance, there's and I have the the bread set up and the time and everything else. There's no place on earth I need to be or at least see before I pass away. Then I'm going to Peru to see the Inca Citadel, Machu Picchu of Machu Picchu. Damn. I need to see Machu Picchu. So like uh, for me, it's a, it's just one of those spots that like the more I read about it, the more I got into it. It's just you know, it's a magical place. You're on the top of an 8,000 foot fucking mountain. So you're up in the mountain, like just the way they build it on the top and people don't know what the fuck it is. They think it was used as a citadel with the Incas in like the 1400s, but they're not fucking sure. They so again, it's one of them. They don't so carve exactly. it you're 6,000 feet in the air and they're like, no, it's it so dope. carved perfectly. Like, they had guys. farms and shit up there the way they like carved out these like sections to be able to you know have uh agriculture and set up all their food it, it's just uh with you know with every person that's ever wood wooden yeah six clay you know? Yeah. and clay. you know to get up there there's no easy way to get uh, even well, I, I guess nowadays when i did i've looked it up multiple times but you can take like some fucking stupid fucking train to the top or like some caravan or you can take this footpath and hike your ass up there like they did and do it the real way. But like, you know, the people that have done it said it's, you know, it's like a fucking spiritual endeavor by going through there, just being in that era. There was a lot of people think there was a lot of shit sacrificed up there. 
So like, there's just, uh, I don't know, there's something about Machu Picchu for me that, and it's <clears throat> in Peru, which happens to have some of my favorite mm-hmm. yeah, words in the world. Yeah, whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We in Peru, demo. baby. We yeah. in Peru. Nice. Yeah, but Ma- definitely Machu Picchu out. for me. Nice. Shout out Machu Picchu. Good so choice. For me, the one place I want to go to is Easter Island. Oh, like, okay. I'm just like You're trying to find a head that's bigger than yours. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Man. <laughs> bang. Bang. Got him. I got him. What a fuck are you? But nah, dude. It's just I'm fast. I can find a labia just... bigger in your head. My uh, yeah, My apparently. <laughs> uh, but no, I was just fascinated on like how those shits fucking got there. Like, what's the deal? I yeah, just like to see yeah. like that. Well, we don't know. No, no one, one knows. Yeah, no, one knows. Know. Yeah, yeah. no one yeah, fucking yeah. knows. That's all, crazy. A couple dickheads think they know. He don't know shit. I would love to. I remember I had a librarian that said that she was like, I would love if that was just like a prank. You know? <laughs> They're like, let's just put a bunch of fucking heads over here. See what the fuck these idiots think we're doing. You Watch know? these if- white explorers show up on their boat and go, what the fuck? <laughs> what, if you're, what if you're in a fishing village, right? You're in a fishing village there. And you just spend like eight generations being like, these are our gods. And we have, we, we, we're writing this down in a book. It's right in the middle of town, we're writing this down in a book. And then like 200 years later, a bunch of white people just show up and just like, ah, fucking fuck that book. Uh, yeah. Give me your fish. And they just roll and you're like, and now no one will ever know uh, <laughs> all of the detailed stories. Like, yeah. Well, actually he's different. I, they look the same, but his, he has a larger left nostril. That's the God of fertility. And his name is, is it? <laughs> nope. Sorry. All, it's all gone. It's all gone. Oh, that man. There was yeah. you, you got to make a copy of that shit, you know. Yeah. Put it in the cloud. Uh, yeah. so, all it takes is one one Genghis Khan to show up, and then your and whole culture gone. is a race. Everybody changed. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's a wrap. Sorry, it's, guys, it's all gone. So, all right. So we're coming to the top of time. Uh, before we get out of here, though, I do want to shout out. I'll tell you this, man. Uh, we were pretty. Me and Steve, people were dropping like flies, pal. And it was me and Steve just hanging on by our nethers at this time last year. We are yeah, living thanks. on a hope and a prayer. And I'll tell you, Burn came through in such a way. I remember sure talking did. to Burn, and because Pete had left, and Burn was like, "Dude, you could have asked me. I would have gone. You know, like you know, because I Pete had left and Justin had come on at this point." And he's like, why did, you know, he's like, you could have asked me. I would have helped you if you needed help. I was like, well, I do need fucking help because it's just me and Steve on the fucking pop in now. So Burns jumped on. And since Burns jumped on, we were able to get Liam to jump on, which was fucking great. Tom's here and there. Sean Day's here and there. You know what I mean? And we've been able to do a bunch of like, dude, the 44 round table was incredible. Mm-hmm. We've had almost all your family on here and everybody from N- or anyone from 44. Like we've done some crazy. We had the fucking uh, the the Mario Kart caper. We've had drafts. We've had game show. Dude, the game show. We did that last February. Right. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. Steve wild. loved it. Yeah. Oh, it Steve's favorite show ever. Yeah, we got to do something like. Well, I, next time we do that, it's got to be in person. That's what I, I'm pretty sure I found out I was an asshole that day again in my life because people were like, "Yo, that was great. You were just fucking annoyed and uh-huh. talking shit the whole no. time." I was like, "Steve, you did left it, that it episode." That bad? No, it came off great. You left that episode. And we were like, "Yo, asshole, Ed McMahon is a great idea." Like yeah. side, the sidekick who just sits yeah. on the host the whole time uh, is yeah. actually a really good, a really good angle. Fuck. But burn. Fucking I, Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah. Uh, fuck fucking Whoopi that Goldberg. You fat bitch. Whoopi fucking Goldberg. I can't fuck wait her. to see. I can't wait to see the thirty for thirty on that uh, on that trivia contest because Dude, the way it wrapped up, you, it's almost it's it's almost it fucking couldn't unbelievable. Be, couldn't couldn't end been. worse for me. Dude, I'll tell you, going to five overtimes that dude, because remember we did four overtimes and I was like, fuck this. It's we're doing Sun one death. more, we're doing one more fucking question. Who wants to answer it? And it was Brad and Liam, and they didn't know the answer, right? And then all of a sudden, I think Liam was like out. Liam was like, wouldn't it be hilarious if it was Whoopi Goldberg? And then Brad's like, fuck it. It's what, you know, and then that's what it was. And I was, dude, I was there. It was, it was, it was, (laughs) it was, it was was heartbreaking. I mean, it was absolutely shattering, Uh, but it was so good. The crazy thing was, it's like, there's so many chances for, you know, whoever to win. 
Like there are so many chances where that game could have ended. For some reason, I was cutting my grass the other day, and I thought about how I missed the Green Street Hooligans question. Oh, which that was is it. Still That's like, the game right there. That is the game right there. Still in my mind. I just I was wasn't thinking the right way. The mean green, it, you know? the mean I, green machine. Yeah. yeah. I missed Han Solo using a lightsaber. lightsaber. I fucked up on that one. Yeah. All right. Let's agree that Liam is my daddy. And, uh, well, <laughs> apparently not. We'll see. So, but either way, Burn, before you get out of here, I would just like to ask, like, you know, what can you give us a synopsis of what one year on the Work and Perspectives podcast has been like for you. Um, yeah, like I love doing the Wednesday show because we get to we, we get to uh, do the recap, do the precap, and then recently we started doing kind of our own little thing. I'm just doing some weird stuff. Um, I, I miss J Dub. Uh, I hope that at some point, I don't know what his scores are right now, but I hope he he graduates. You know, to this pod at some <laughs> point. Um, just keep studying J Dub. Keep working hard. Keep grinding. You know, you'll get here. And uh, oh, dude, he's a he's a beast. Um, you know, for that show. And uh, yeah, man, it's been fun. I've got to hang out with a bunch of my friends. I've got to bring on people that I knew through work, kind of casually. I got to reconnect with some people that I haven't seen or talked to in a long time. I get to meet people like Steve and J-Dub and Liam. Like, I've still never met these people in person. You're, I know your brother. I know Pete, you know? I know Pretty Rick. Like, that's pretty much the the jam. I don't know that I knew Sweet Mama Cheesecake in person. And I was so happy to, like, oh, two weeks ago, actually get to be like, oh, this is why Matt's been so high on this person, uh, you know, for 18 years. Oh, there she is. Sounds great. And she helped him vandalize things. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, it's a writer. Wow. Uh, we have known each other for 18 years, huh, Burn? You and me? Yeah. 2004. I, I mean, I think 03, 04, right? Yeah, it was 2004, I think, when we met. Matt, our, our, our baby could, could enlist, you know? Yeah. Damn right. Damn <laughs> Couldn't right. Buy sick, can't buy cigarettes, but our baby could enlist right now. Um, no, man, it's been awesome. Just happy you invited me on. I was, uh, I was, I was honored to be asked to be a guest of the podcast and your uh, hard work and determination and grind uh you know we, we all want to show up and not be shitty because we know you're gonna show up and be solid so hey, we're, thanks we, for getting me on the on the on the horn we we ride together fam on this show brother so family you, family. you, you think Whoa. we're gonna get in trouble <laughs> <laughs> dude we uh but no we uh no thank you for coming on and dude everything you've done and all the people you brought on it's been a great time and honestly you're right like it's you know we would talk and stuff but when we stop working together it's like you become estranged for a little bit but being able to well you go you have kids you don't live near each other like all of a sudden your opportunities are your opportunities just get less and less and less yeah um, so honestly like one of the best things about doing the show is just like we get to hang out for you know an hour or so every week hour a week know? no matter what no matter what i know i'm gonna get to have a fucking weird conversation with a, a couple of creeps and uh, <laughs> yep. that's all i need that's all i need yeah nice well man fucking blessed to have you brother and i can't thank you enough so you're looking i think you at at time of recording including the episodes you've been on prior to the when you came on full time i think you're at 55 was the count 55 episodes wow. yeah and here's the most important thing the oldest one and the most recent one for at least a couple of days i will hold that accordion record you know yeah True. Yeah, you were the first ever episode, and and now the mm-hmm. now the most recent. I mean, what I'm saying. I got a couple yeah. of days. It's like when a quarterback signs a contract, and like we guarantee 175 million dollars. The next dude is just like, well, he gets 176 million dollars. Like, mm-hmm. But for two and a half weeks, that guy was the highest paid quarterback of yeah. all time. Yeah. Nice. So, all right, we're coming towards the top of time. So before we get out of here. Uh, Biff Sweater Man, I can't thank you enough for being on the show again. This was great. Uh, is there anything you want to say to the Biff Sweater faithful before we take off? I'm all good. Thanks for having me, brother. Great to see everybody again. And uh, I'm going to go watch that Sweet Mama Cheesecake episode right after this. Love it. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks for Appreciate popping on, TC. Uh, yeah. might, be home, Always, might, be home this, might be home this weekend. Not sure yet. All right. Hit me up if you are. I think we're oh, around. Yeah. Nice. nice. Love it. Awesome. Thank you. Let's meet or strong stem. Anything you want to say to the cult of Cabot before we get out of here? There sure the fuck is. One, 
with my man dressed like this, can we please vote for Byrne? If you ran for fucking public office, I would vote for you before I voted for the stroke victim or the Turkish doctor. That's all I got to say in Pennsylvania. Either way. I mean, he's articulate. He's fucking smart. He speaks well. He dresses nice. He's handsome. Boom. I Like, what are we doing? I got the fucking stroke guy and the Turkish bull. Come on, give me a fucking break. <laughs> and the second thing I got to do is uh, this is going to be a little weird. I, I don't think that you guys fully understood my experience. So while I was thinking about this, what it was like when I put my Excuse me, that's in, that, in that major, major hole in the world. It was so when you're a kid, every guy's done this. You ever run too hard and you lost your bounce and you went into the corner of the moon bounce where you kind of went down the thing, but under the wall, <laughs> yes. you, know I mean? you know how you've been and you feel like you can't get out because it's yes. eating you. Yeah, that's that's where I was. You know I mean? Does that make sense? Now I wake that up makes... sweating sometimes. No man's land. You were in no man's land. I couldn't get out. Yeah. Steve sees it. Steve sees a trampoline. He just lays down on the ground and starts shaking. <laughs> It was, a, it, was a, it was a moon bounce. It's a bounce yeah. house I get upset about. Honestly, yes. Steve, a part of you will be there forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a part of you never left. Yo, yo, that makes me more Native American than that cunt Elizabeth Warren. I'll tell yeah. you that. True that. True that. Very nice. I would have I would have voted for her in 2020. But anyway. <laughs> uh, very nice. Lashmish Ma. Anything you got to say to Lashmish Nation before we get out of here? Four no. Four no. Oh, oh, fuck out of here with it. Burn. That Slow and... clapping for Danny Dimes. Yeah. Oh, I hate that motherfucker so much. <laughs> God, I hate him. I hate his ass so much. I think Jacob Fromm is going to be starting at quarterback uh, or Davis Webb uh, this Sunday morning in London versus the Packers. So uh, Giants fans, have talk all the shit you want to talk for the next couple of days because it's not, you know, come, <laughs> come, come, come all hollows Eve. Uh, those opportunities might not be there anymore. But yeah, uh, first time the Giants have won three games before week nine in six years. So, what? Is that yeah, for how- real? gross is that the first time they've gotten to three wins before week nine in the last six seasons so yeah. listen i root for them dudes i like the manning cast uh i appreciate that i was in my tw- mid to late 20s early 30s when they were winning super bowls so i was out and single and didn't have kids and was able to just fucking rage um eli's a goober i love him to death and uh I think the Eagles are really good, which fucking sucks for me. Atta boy, atta boy. I think they're really good. We know, we know, if any, we've all known the birds long enough that that shit could change real fucking quick. Oh, yeah, I know, the but fuck they up, have, you like, Debbie Downer motherfucker. You fucking cunt twat. You know as well as I do that something bad can happen. Oh, all right, all right. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care. Before that happens, it's fun. True. Listen, True. before I moved to Philadelphia, I was 17 years old. And I was like, uh, who do I hate the most? I'm like, easily the Dallas Cowboys. And then I moved to Philly, went to school, ended up spending like 18 years there. And then I left. And I was like, who do you hate the most? And I was like, it's absolutely the Eagles. I can't even enjoy the <laughs> Phillies game without this Eagles chant. Um, yeah. And we never beat them, ever. We beat Dallas all the time. We never beat the Eagles. Uh, and so I'm the last guy in the world who wants to say anything nice about the Eagles. But you guys just have dudes at all the spot. You see me yep. dudes. Like, secondary has dudes. Your wide receivers are dudes. The O-line has a couple dudes. The defensive line has a couple Like, yeah. Cool. Big fucking I'm not going to do the dog thing. But some some dudes nah. who are like, oh, I take that guy. I take that guy. Oh, Dallas Goddard. Mm-hmm. I take that guy. Like, listen, I'm trying yeah, to move you didn't ever. see him drop that fucking touchdown pass, so. Um, no, I did. I mean, I saw. I didn't care. Listen, Matt, I don't you know? like your fucking attitude. Yeah, what is up with like, yeah, I don't fuck, fucking man. like the way you're acting. Have we not I'm, all watched the Eagles our entire fucking you lives? Cynical fuck. All right. No, I haven't. I. Well, I mean, I mean, it's just a life. I mean, the one year that wasn't a disappointment, but they fucking disappoint you. Get all ready. Right, you don't gotta bring it up all the time. We fucking know. Matt, Get it's ready Matt, for it's... us to lose to a shit team. Like we'll lose to Pittsburgh or something. You know yeah, but I mean? that'll be great. So what? You had a thirteen and four, and yeah, maybe wait, not you know anymore, what I mean? dude. Maybe not anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gotta have faith, man. Well, be, someone's got to. Someone's uh-huh. got to say it so that I can be wrong. Because if no one's saying it, then it's gonna happen. But you need one person to say it, so we maybe just had it won't two, happen. You fucking tomato paste, fuck. <laughs> I, I don't know why that came out with that, but that's the first Ooh. thing that hit my head. I had this conversation with my wife uh, years ago, and she's a psychologist, so I try not to talk to her about things because I'm Smart. worried, you know, <laughs> she's going to snipe me. But I was like, 
you ever just think about like the worst case scenario very specifically like here's how my mom's gonna die and it's gonna be oh. really weird and really specific and really detailed and now that i've thought about it it can't possibly happen like that right so i can just i just move that one out and then you're like if i can just think of every scenario it would just be way too coincidental for like something bad to happen and my wife was like no bud hey just unjinx it you know what i mean let's go yes. yeah exactly and she was like yeah yeah, yeah. so so your whole life is trying to put together complicated equations of all of the ways that nothing bad will ever happen to anyone. That seems like it's probably not a great use of your time and energy. And I was like, well, that sounds fair enough. Uh, thanks for putting it to me that way. And uh, yeah. So, yeah, you're not wrong. So, well, speaking of burn, uh, what do you got to say to the Benoit Pukasi faithful before we take off? Ah, uh, hold on, you fucking clown. You didn't let Liam finish his shit. I didn't. You have to cut it and roll it back. Now you got something to say, right, Liam? You said go birds. I always have something to say, but yeah, <laughs> I said four and oh, go birds. I thought Good. he was bringing up some other fucking snazzy little line or something. He was acting like it looked like he was going to say something. And I said, if I was going to say, thing. if I was going to say something like that, I would say, ah. I would say, if you can't find peace within yourself, you're not going to find it anywhere else in this world. Amen. That's what, what I would say. In the dick. Oh Every time. God. Every time, Liam. Every Dude, time. Dude, you fucking cock-nosed bandit. Where God were you damn. when I was stuck in the moon bounce, yo? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like you were in peace there. Yeah. <laughs> if that's how I had to die, I was okay. Yeah, Steve was like, oh, yeah, exactly. I accepted my fate immediately. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I guess I'm never getting out of here. <laughs> no, be worse. And, I, and then I was like, yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, it'd be worse. Yeah, we've all thought you were going to die in a lot worse way than that. A hundred percent. Everyone would be like, damn, that's how Steve went out. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, nice all right benoit now that liam's finished thank you steve uh benoit Pudkase. shut up you, you fake eagle fan fuck eat a dick twat waffle i've had fucking i know more about the fucking birds and eat ah! more fucking shit than your fucking face so shut your fucking cock nose because i'm not a fucking ball bag four and oh dick smoking cock riding asshole all right I've seen the fucking lights. I've seen the. I've been to the show and I've seen the fucking strings. I will, right? I'm offering right now to host Eagles trivia next week. Ooh. If you want, I'll host Eagles trivia. Whoever wants to throw their hat into the ring, Pete. Can well, throw I'll their hat smoke the that Pete. fucking Elmer's glue looking Let's faggot go. over there. Listen, you <laughs> fuck out of here fuck, with that, dude. You fucking. How many times have I told you not to say that fucking word? Damn you fucking it. cunt nugget. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. God damn. I didn't, I didn't even know I said it. It just came out naturally. Listen, fucking Trailer Park Tony. I'm going to fucking beat your dick off. <laughs> oh, oh, keep whoa. that in. Keep that in. Now he's there. Uh, keep that in. Jesus like you, Christ. I'm going to fuck your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, oh. I want you to take two steps back and literally fuck your face. I'm going to come at you like no one's ever came on. <laughs> yeah, you, Dude, that video is hilarious. I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, you ever right. see that where, do, they just, where do, all they make you, is the cuts of the WWF guy yeah, saying yeah. super gay shit. Yeah. And he's like, if you ever see you, brother, in the street, I will come all over you yeah, and yeah. come so hard <laughs> that you're not ready for this come. <laughs> <laughs> this shit is awful. Wow. Here's what wow. I'm saying. I will. Matt's not impressed. Do, he is a fan. Anyone wants to do Eagles trivia, I will do Eagles trivia from the perspective of somebody who fucking hates the Eagles and just have <laughs> a bunch of funny stuff in there. And whoever wants to throw their hat in the ring, throw their hat in. But if you're interested, yep. I'll get that shit together. I'm it actually sounds up. Who's great. the real? Who's the real Eagles fan from a guy who doesn't well, like the Eagles? I'm the number <laughs> one seed, so. You're we'll you're the fucking lollipop gang optimist bullshit. All right. Who doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about? Oh, yeah. Oh. So, Easy before I say the f word. Ooh, those are again mm. for, the, <laughs> yeah. for the thousandth time. Dog, it's not been that many. Calm down. It's not like oh, there's no, there's no way it's less than a thousand. There's <laughs> no way it's under a thousand. <laughs> There's no way there's under a hundred thousand. Yeah, there's no way it's under a thousand. At least like not necessarily on air. But like at least at least between on air and edit, easily yep. four figures. All right. Well, is there anything else, uh, Burn? You want to say? No, man. Burn? Just yeah, I just appreciate it, man. Thanks for showing up, guys. It was fucking fun. It's always yeah. fun. And, and now for the fine, now for the finale, he's gonna strip for you, ladies. So here we go. Dude, you got the fucking tie up. <laughs> 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 
have some nipples, you know what I mean? Oh. Nice. Well, speaking of strippers, this has been another episode <laughs> of the Working Perspectives podcast. I'm this Alabelle. is a really tiny nipple. Really oh, small nipples. Jesus Christ. Very small nipples, you know. It's, it's like a, a small dime. Jesus. A small nip, you know. Oh, yeah, I'm the dime. opposite. I got the saucer boys. Yeah. No, I got the tiny boys. I got the tiny you know, boys. Well, lucky, you. lucky fucking you. Yeah. I got the old you. pencil erasers. Yeah. Is that, <laughs> you ever look at a dude's nipples in the locker room and be like, God damn. Yeah. No one has ever done. <laughs> yeah, really? I've never, yeah. never occurred to be like. That only Matt's perfect though. fucking nipples, man. I've only God ever damn. did that to Matt. Yeah, you and everybody else, pal. Matt, do you have excellent <laughs> nipples that I didn't know about? <laughs> no. If you could get through his fucking god yeah. sweater, yeah, and then maybe you could see Dave. him. He's covered Dave. by a fucking. Yeah, I don't know. I've been burned for all I know. Yeah, I was last time you I saw him. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've never seen him. <laughs> I haven't seen him in fucking twenty years. So you know, last time I saw him, they were great. Uh, but his wife no lays down and rubs her hand up his chest and gets her shit caught. She can't get her hand out now. Yep, it's all so, nappy and shit. Speaking of nah, nappy, this is another episode <laughs> of the Working Perspectives podcast. I'm Matt Lavelle. Coming yeah! Today by Strong Stem Steve Cabot, the bad boy Benoit Pukase, the Shmise Liam Reese, and our special guest today was the one and only Biff Sweater, Tim Casey. In case you're wondering, you can find all our stuff and all our content and all podcast platforms and YouTube at Working Perspectives Podcast. You can us on Instagram at Working Perspectives Podcast. And you can join us on the Twitter and the taking talk the working deep pie so if you be guests on the show please email us at workinspectors at gmail.com and please like and subscribe so we can keep bringing you the sweet sweet content uh thanks for listening happy one year anniversary to benoit Pucase. have a great weekend thanks. vote for burn see ya thanks for having me all right all right this is now game five baby all right, all right. Timmy, I got- Tim, timmy 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 Grab onto your nuts, okay? Because it's about to get fucking crazy here. Well, you guys- I'm, about, I'm about to ball. I'm about to leave. But burn, you're the man. Appreciate working with <laughs> you, brother. We'll, we'll get up together one time. Hey, I'm man, out of Steve, this I can't wait to get, to get to. Whatever yes, the light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no. Okay, so this is game five. Liam is up three games to one, with a chance to take it all tonight. Uh, oh, uh, burn. That's a seven, TC. Bond, That's a seven, TC. Burn. Okay. Burn odd or even? Odd. All right. Liam, you call it first. In the air. Let me have it. All right. Go ahead. Heads. And it's tails. And it's tails. Burn starts off hot again. Burn stops off hot again. Okay. Here we go. All right. Burn, call it in the air. Let's go tails. Tails it is. Burns up two to nothing. Two to nothing. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Lashmoosh. Lashmoosh. Call it in the air. Heads. And it's heads. Liam's on the board. Liam is on the board. Two to one. Two to one, Benoit. Two to one, much, Benoit. How much money you guys got on this? Zero. We have our oh. lives on this. <laughs> our lives. But we are going to do a random number generator, Timmy. And, that you uh, can bet on. Yeah. That we can bet on, yeah. Okay. So two to one right now in favor of Burn. Here we go. Uh, whose turn is it? Burn. It's mine. Yeah. Call, call it in here. Tails. And it's heads. Woo! Mm-hmm. Woo! All right. It is now two to two. Two to two. Liam has come storming back. Lishmishma, call it in the air. Tails. And it's heads. Woo! Uh, Woo! That just fucked me. Can't believe it. Can't burn, believe that was heads. Burn here with a chance to steal. Burn here with a chance to steal. Burn. Liam, you want to call it for me? Call it in the air, Burn. He's gonna call tails. He's gonna say tails. he's said tails every time. I've never, I've never swayed. And it was just heads three times in a row. Tails. And you're right. Burn takes game. It is tails, and Burn takes game five. Wow. <laughs> Timmy, wow. Burn, Burn Timmy, was, I lost. Yeah, I lost the first three games. Uh, four three. Oh, shit. It came down All to seven them. games, the first three games. Burn has been was down three nothing. It is now mm-hmm. three to two. We're going next week. We're going into game six. And I've never called him. So, wow. Yo, Burn, just, what's what's the chances just, of you ever going to Madness House again? Uh, this year, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> if no. I, 
If I only I'm saying ever one, again. <laughs> oh no. If I only make it to one more for the rest of my life, it's gonna be this fucking year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's for sure. All right. Say, uh, oh. No, no. Go, go ahead, oh. Tim. What were you gonna say? No, I was gonna say we have to do that Roomba on the pool table gambling. <laughs> oh, which is so good. You just oh, bet yeah. on pool, you put the Roomba on the pool table and just bet on what ball goes in. Oh, I love the that. ball's gonna I be the next that. one to go in. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's we did, awesome. Yeah, dude, we did a uh, <laughs> At at, our, at Madness House, we go to watch the tournament. We did a uh, Super Bowl block pool on simulated Super Tech Mobile. So like we oh. filled out a whole block pool, and then we would just simulate final score. Video I don't know if games. we did it by. I think we might. I don't know if we did it by quarter or just the final did. score. But <laughs> no, it went by quarter. It, had, it has to. Dude, that quarter. that works too. That would be awesome. All right, time for the random number generator. You guys know the deal. It's a dollar to pick. Uh, Burn, what is your random number you want? 73. 73, very nice. Lashmoosh, what's your number? 66. 66, pick up six, very nice. Tim Casey, what is your random number you want? 24. 24, love it. And I'm going to pick 38. There we go. All right, here we go, guys. I don't know if you can see my screen. I have the random number generator up. And it's the minimum is one, max is 100. I'm going to hit it now. Here we go. One, two, three. 68. Dang. Wow. Who had 66? Liam? Yeah. Damn, that was pretty fucking close, babe. Pretty fucking close there, babe. So, so now, Timmy, everyone throws a dollar into the pool every time we do this, and once somebody hits it, they get whatever whatever's there. So now, what was it? What did it land on last time? I actually last, care about last time that. it landed on forty. Okay, Four, yeah, it was All right. forty even. That's yeah. what I wanted to know. All right, good. So nice. All right, guys. Well, good fucking shit tonight. I didn't want to do a super long show, but fucking burn. Happy one year, man. Thank you so much for being yeah, the fuck yeah, best. guys. Appreciate. It. Thanks for coming what a on. Great, great fucking show. Great job, guys. All right. All right. Well, Thanks, guys. I had fun. Yep. See you All later, right, fellas. Yep. Good shit, guys. Liam, go to bed. I'm gonna go watch Andor. And, I got like uh, half of the episode left, so I'm hoping so I can gonna, stay like, awake for like 20 minutes. Yeah. Just, yeah. just trying to make sure before those eyelids finally yep. close. 20 go minutes, dude. Yeah. Go get them. Nice. Go get them. All right, guys. Thank you, Maddie. Love you guys. Yep. See you. See you.